Hi guys. <laughs> Welcome back to RT Share Tea, where respiratory therapists live out loud. With me, your host, Linda Fry, the asthma lady. Yes, welcome everybody. Welcome to anyone new. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much to the Allergy and Asthma Network, which who I was with over the weekend, doing all these community health events, spreading asthma awareness and doing asthma screenings in New York City, specifically in Harlem. And so had an amazing time and I have some footage, some more footage coming up on those events coming up very soon okay so today's episode we are continuing off the episode from last week which was shared decision making and that process on the provider end so just just the perspective of of how it works on the provider end so this episode we're focusing on how the decision making process uh how it works from the patient point of view or on their end right because remember this is about a partnership and creating a success plan together to get um you as the patient where you want to be in your life with a chronic disease right so that is the tone for the episode today all right so let me start off with a story about, um, you know, a real life thing that happened to me involving my father in regards to shared decision making um, process and, and empowering my dad to make a decision in his own health care. All right. So my dad back into 2018, he had a stroke and God is good, you know, he was able to recover um, around 95% back to his old self. But of course, as you guys can imagine, during that time, it was, you know, it was a scary thing for us to deal with um, as a family. So, but anyway, luckily dad was able to navigate through, um, you know, going, uh, going to his specialist. He was seeing a neurologist and he was also seeing his primary care provider. So one day during, you know, his follow-up visits in the beginning of this journey, you know, I asked him, um, all right, dad. So how did the appointment go with, with your doctor? And, um, remember the questions you were asking me about the medication. Did you ask him the, did you ask him the questions about the meds? And my doctor said, and my dad said, um, oh yeah, everything was good. Everything was fine. I said, I said, okay, dad. So did you, did he answer the questions for you? Did you ask him the, the, the questions? And he said, well, Linda, you know, he, he was too busy and it seemed like he was in a rush and he was speaking very fast. I could not understand him. And I said, I said that did he answer the question were you able to ask him the questions and do you feel comfortable speaking to him and dad said no because he doesn't understand what he's saying the doctor has a very thick indian accent and he did not we was not grasping what was happening at the appointment so i asked my dad straight up i said dad do you want to change your doctor? Do you feel like the doctor is helping you be where you want to be? And he said, yes, I think I need to change the doctor. I don't, I don't, I'm not understanding what's going on. Um, because of the, the, he just wasn't grasping what was going on because of the, 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 the accent and the doctor rushing him out of the appointment. So, we went on the journey of finding him a new doctor. <laughs> and now, you know, we went to, through his insurance company and I mean, we went through his insurance plan. We picked another doctor in the network. My dad told me that he preferred a male doctor. And I asked my dad, well, would you, would you, would it make you feel more comfortable if he also spoke Creole as well? And he said, yes. So now my dad has a male doctor that has, that can speak English and Creole. And so that's kind of what this, this episode is about. It's just empowering you as, as patients and those that may have issues 
chronic diseases such as you know asthma copd or or you know just dealing with high blood pressure or anything like that just know that it is your right to change your doctor if you do not feel comfortable speaking to them about your concerns your needs and what you need to be where you want to be in your in 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 your health in your health and in your well-being altogether right so um that's what this is this is about and i'm glad i was able to help my dad navigate through that and just understand that there in some cultures you know my dad is haitian and so um you know in the haitian culture a lot of the times the doctor is seen as a person of authority um you know so so just for a lack of a better word what they say pretty much is law because you go to them you're asking for the doctor for help and then the doctor tells you pretty much what to do and in that culture you follow it and you know it is what it is so we have to know that um um that you it is your right to be comfortable in this space and speaking to your doctor and it really does help um, benefit you because in these chronic diseases the, the doctor does not have um, most likely does not have the disease that he he or she is helping you with um, it's it's you that have to deal with this condition for most of your life so it is in your best interest to be engaged and to fully understand fully participate and and communicate connect with your with your team right so just some tips to help you to navigate through uh, um, shared decision making which just means you you and the provider you and the team the medical team working together and using evidence-based resources to help you make informed decisions um, that will increase your quality of life. So that's what that's about. So just some tips, right? So prepare for your appointments in advance. So when you know a doctor's appointment is coming up, especially for those who know it's really hard to physically get into the appointment. And I'm talking about those because there are some patients that they don't like virtual appointments. Although if you can't see your doctor in, per in person, I strongly suggest that you take those virtual appointments so for those that like to see pay that like to see their doctor their provider in person my best advice is to prepare for the appointment in advance so what did does what does that mean when you go to the appointment bring the prescription bottles with you and show them the one because sometimes you may forget the name of the medication okay so bring the prescription bottle with you and show them and you can say yeah this one this is the one i like this is the one i don't like this is the one that has the side effects with this this is the one that i think works or not so you can you can voice your concern and just show them what it is that um how you feel about the specific drug and and why and then you know you can kind of go from there also you can bring with you your your self-management monitoring results so what that means is okay for example if um you you take your own blood pressure at home you could take the last blood pressure reading that you had with you to your visit for those with asthma if you do peak flow if you use a peak flow meter you can bring your peak flow meter results with you to your appointment and let them know what's going on same thing for folks that have diabetes you could show your if you self test at home you bring your glucose um, um, test with you so just just, just stuff like that so that really helps and um what else and oh writing stuff down i would tell my dad because he would talk to me and then he would know the 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 questions that he wanted to ask when he would speak to me and then um i would encourage him to write those things down because sometimes i know how his memory gets i would tell him okay write the question down so you can remember to ask the doctor during the visit because you know you know even my memory my memory is not that great so 
I have to write stuff down. So I encourage anyone else, if you have a concern, write those things down so you can remember to ask them during the appointment. So those, those are just some of my, my tips um, to, to, to um, engage in decision and share decision making during your appointments with your provider and your medical team. So just be open and engage when it comes to your own self-management and don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to speak up about your concerns and where you feel you want to be because this is about your quality of life. All right, guys. And as a provider myself, we want to see you do well. Okay. We want you to succeed. All right. So yes. All right, guys. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something from me. Um, Ooh, before we go, I just wanted to mention on Saturday, August 27th, I will be with the Allergy and Asthma Network and we are providing free asthma uh, screening surveys and whoever takes the screening survey will get a $10 gift card at um, the Elijah Alvey Foundation why not care back to school events, back to school drive in Manhattan, the Lower East Side new york from 12 to 4. so they're giving they're giving away a thousand free book bags on that day rain or shine yes hallelujah <laughs> so for those of you who need those school supplies um you know for those of us who have who have not started school yet come through get the supplies and know that we're going to have a good time they have so much prizes giveaways and there's so many community partners um including us the allergy and asthma network uh, that will be there providing quality resources on asthma and allergies so looking forward to seeing you there those that's going to be in new york swing by and come see me uh also don't forget this the this book is still available asthma control please nine steps to community engagement and asthma awareness i it's still available for i believe a limited time i offer still on amazon kindle unlimited so check it out and the paperback is 6.99 less than a, a, a chicken salad burrito bowl at chipotle okay so it's available for those that want to do this type of work all right and we need more of you out there so yes um so yeah and that's it so so much more to come know that we are growing together i have so many guest co-hosts lined up um you know september's coming september's a very busy time for those it, it, you know that work in the emergency room you're gonna be seeing a lot of asthma patients we all know how that is and so you know just just make sure you have your asthma resources lined up for the folks that need it okay so yes so anyway guys I'll see you guys next week. Remember to invest in yourself and to only compete with yesterday's version of you. All right. Bye.